At this time, we are going through details related to setting up appropriate environment to practice all aspects related to Databricks Certified Associate Developer for Apache Spark 3.0. Uh, we have decided to go with Azure. Let's uh, uh, understand how to sign up for Azure account, then we'll take it further. To sign up for Azure, you just have to go to your browser and then you have to say portal.azure.com. It will take you to this page. You can see that it have redirected us to login.microsoftonline.com. You can actually follow the instructions here you should be able to complete the setup process with respect to Azure account. Once you have the valid Azure account, then you can actually log in and take care of setting up Databricks platform. Make sure you follow all the instructions. If it asks you for the credit card, make sure you enter the credit card details as well, because to take the training with respect to preparation for the uh, Databricks certification, you might have to set up a multi-node cluster, which is not free. Uh, you might have to even spend some money so that you can actually get all hands-on expertise with respect to uh, Databricks so that you can take the exam with a little bit of confidence. That being said, go to portal.edu.com. Complete the sign up process, make sure you have valid account, then we should be able to log in and we should be able to uh, set up the uh, Databricks environment without any issues. Uh, assuming uh, you will be completing the sign up process as part of the next lecture, we'll go through the details about setting up Databricks platform using Azure portal. At this time, we are going through details related to setting up Databricks platform using Azure so that we can practice all important aspects related to the certification called as Databricks Certified Associate Developer for Apache Spark 3.0. Now, let's go through the details about logging in into the portal.azure.com and then setting up the Databricks platform using the portal. For that, I'll be opening the browser. Let me say portal.azure.com. I have already entered my email ID. Now, let me click on next. I already have account with that email ID. Let me click on personal account. Uh, it is automatically filling the password because I have cached the password. Let me click on sign in. Let me say yes with respect to stay signed in so that I don't need to log in every time with my username and password. It will automatically take us to the Azure portal. Once you are in the Azure portal, you should be able to search for Databricks using this global search bar. As I have already used Databricks in the past, it is actually uh, displayed as part of the uh, recent services. You might not have this here, but you will be having this global search bar. You just have to search for Azure Databricks here. You can see the Azure Databricks here. You should be able to click on it and it will take you to the uh, dashboard related to Azure Databricks. As part of my Azure account, already I have one uh, Databricks environment. It is being displayed as part of this dashboard. If you do not have any Databricks environments, you might see a different page, which might have create somewhere in the middle. You just have to click on create and you should be able to go to the wizard to set up the Databricks environment. In my case, I can see create here. I should be able to click on this. It will take me to the create Databricks workspace wizard. I should be able to leverage it and I should be able to set up a Databricks workspace or environment which can be leveraged for practice related to certification exam. Now, with respect to resource group, you can click on create new and you should be able to uh, create a new resource group. Uh, you can specify the name here. I already have a resource group. I would like to use it. And hence, I'm clicking on this drop down and I'm selecting the IT versity Databricks resource group, which I have created for the other Databricks environment. Uh, when it comes to the workspace name, we should be able to give a unique workspace name. Let me name it as DB cert, Databricks cert. Let me choose East US. You can choose whatever region you want to. Uh, when it comes to pricing tier, let me choose the standard one. We can click on review plus create. It will take a few moments and you should be able to see the create button active here. You should be able to click on create. It will take care of creating the Databricks environment for you or Databricks workspace for you. You should be able to review the uh, Databricks workspace by going into the Databricks dashboard. You should be able to click on the search bar and go to the Databricks in recent services. Once you start using it, you should be able to see as part of the recent services. Uh, soon you will be seeing the uh, workspace or Databricks environment that is being created here. It is still being created. You should be able to see the progress here. Uh, you can see that deployment is still in progress. You have to wait for a few minutes and it should reflect here. So let's wait until the deployment is done or the environment or workspace is successfully created. Then we'll actually review the details. Once the deployment is completely done or once the environment or uh, Databricks platform is successfully created, you should be able to see this message. Then you can actually click on go to resource to go into the landing page of this resource or environment or you can also click on this to go into the landing page. Let's click on go to resource here. You can see launch workspace here. 
you can click on it it will actually take you to the databricks uh, console uh, databricks have a web console which can be leveraged to actually go to the details related to databricks platform and also to learn spark effectively this is how you should be able to use azure portal to set up azure databricks platform and also get into the databricks console it is very very important for you to have this uh, platform set up so that you can practice for the certification without too many gaps as the environment is ready let's understand this environment little bit and then we'll actually go through the details related to preparation for the certification exam at this time we are going through the details about setting up the environment to prepare for databricks certified associate developer for apache spark 3.0 so far we have gone through details related to signing up for azure portal and also using it to set up the databricks platform so that we can practice for the certification exam now before going to the details about databricks ui let's make sure we understand the prerequisites and we'll be exploring the databricks ui only with the relevant aspects uh, for the certification we will not be exploring all the details related to databricks ui which are not relevant for the certification if you go to the prerequisites of the certification it says you should have a basic understanding of spark architecture including adaptive query execution we will be covering few aspects related to spark architecture using multi node cluster at the time we will actually talk about how to set up clusters using databricks platform and then it also talks about uh, be able to apply the spark data frame api to complete individual data manipulation task including this they are nothing but selecting renaming and manipulating columns filtering dropping sorting and aggregating rows joining reading writing and partitioning data frames and also working with udf and spark sql functions if you go through all these prerequisites it is not e even using term called as databricks in this which means the certification requires spark skills not the databricks uh, platform skills for that reason i'll be focusing on the certification uh, rather than the platform and hence i'll not be covering so many important aspects related to the platform as part of uh, this course i'll be primarily focusing on spark to explore spark in detail we just have to create notebook and using that notebook we can actually take care of preparation uh, for the certification also uh, in some cases we have to upload the data and use the data i will also demonstrate how to upload the data and use the data as part of the notebooks we'll also try to set up our own data sets using these notebooks and so on and so forth we'll be creating a cluster or two to uh, explore the details related to uh, this point spark architecture including adaptive query execution but Uh, we'll not be uh, going through all the important aspects related to the ui having a good understanding of ui is not relevant for the certification at all you should have good understanding of spark apis to clear the certification just keep in mind this is not uh, azure databricks course this is the course related to databricks certified associate developer for apache spark 3.0 and hence the emphasis will be more on spark apis at this time we are going through the details related to setting up environment for databricks certified associate developer for apache spark 3.0 so far we have gone through the details related to signing up for azure portal and also using azure portal to set up the databricks environment you can see that databricks environment on azure is ready for our preparation for the certification now let's go through the details about setting up the cluster for the preparation of the certification uh, don't worry if you do not understand all the concepts related to databricks clusters it is not very important important thing which you need to keep in mind is to set up cluster with minimum Normal configuration so that you can practice for the certification exam without many challenges. Databricks also provides free version. However, I would highly recommend you to use paid version for the certification. When it comes to the cost, you need to understand some of the nuances with respect to the clusters so that the costs are under control. You will understand by the end of this lecture. That being said, to set up the cluster for the preparation of the certification exam, you can actually go to create. Then you can actually click on cluster. Once you click on cluster, you can see that it have redirected us to compute. and there is a wizard where we can actually use and set up the cluster so in this case you can actually set up the cluster with whatever name you want i'll be creating the cluster by saying db cert cluster you can also uh, give the cluster names in plain english you can actually say databricks certification cluster now here is the thing which you need to keep in mind instead of using standard you can actually select a single node it is the most important thing which you need to keep in mind it will actually set up the cluster with a single node only then when it comes to the uh, databricks runtime version i would highly recommend you to choose lts uh, typically the certification exams will be based on lts version also there will not be too many issues with respect to the platform uh, let's choose 9.1 lts which is the latest as of today when you actually set up uh, as long as you are working on spark 3 which is relevant for the certification exam you choose the lts of that time and you can move forward you can choose lts under standard here 
don't choose the ml it is not relevant for the certification exam just choose standard and then select 9.1 lts or uh, whatever lts is latest when you actually try to set up the environment and you are good to go now it is very important for you to change this setting by default if the single node cluster is ideal for 120 minutes it will automatically terminate however you will be paying for those two hours even though there is no activity to make sure that it is terminated within a reasonable time you can change the value here you can change it to 15 or 30 whatever is relevant to you i typically use 30 let me use 30 in your case you can choose 15 also which means if the cluster is ideal for 30 minutes automatically it will be terminated you don't need to keep in mind that the cluster might be up and running i have to go there and terminate it you don't need to worry too much about it make sure you decrease it to 15 or 30 and then you should be good to go now with respect to the node type you don't need to use 14 gb memory and four cores to begin with with respect to cores i would suggest to stick to four cores but with respect to memory you can actually reduce it to 8 gb and then you can leverage that node type to actually set up the cluster so in this case i can expand let me scroll down to go to 8 gb memory and four cores now let me scroll down and click on advanced options we don't need to worry too much about any of these things at this time we can just click on create cluster it will take care of creating the cluster when you actually set up the cluster using standalone it uses something called as local execution type or local cluster type when you set up multi node cluster it uses standalone we will be setting up multi node cluster also whenever it is relevant to actually go through some of the advanced concepts but to begin with and for majority part of the course we can actually leverage the single node cluster with the local and we are good to go now we should be able to click on create cluster the cluster will be created without any issues we should be able to attach notebooks to this cluster and we should be able to practice all important aspects related to spark to clear the certification as part of uh, setting up the environment for databricks certified associate developer for apache spark 3.0 in the previous lecture we have gone through the details related to setting up the cluster as the cluster is up and running with single node now it is time for us to get started with the notebooks databricks notebooks uh, can be used to prepare for the certification exam where we'll be developing a lot of spark related code that being said to get started with the notebooks you can hover your mouse to this click on create and then click on notebook it will take us to create notebook wizard we should be able to give the no name to the notebook let's say getting started you can choose uh, programming language here in this case we'll be preparing using python as programming language and hence we should be able to leave the default one if you wanted to switch to scala you can actually expand this and then click on scala and then take it further uh, for now we'll be focusing on python as programming language and hence let's make sure that python is chosen here also you can see that it is automatically associated with the running cluster if you have multiple clusters you should be able to switch between the clusters as well by clicking on this and then by choosing the appropriate cluster in this case as the running cluster is automatically selected we should be able to move forward and click on create it will take care of creating the notebook for us now the notebook is ready with python as programming language we should be able to validate whether the python code will work or not by saying print hello world you can run it you can see the output here now you should be able to use spark and see what it actually does you can see the details related to spark here why you are able to see these details don't worry too much about those things at this time i'll be covering those aspects at a later point in time for now let's make sure that you can actually create a notebook and run python code and also validate whether spark object is available for you or not if you are not able to run this then you, you have to troubleshoot make sure these are working and then only you should be able to move forward in the pursuit of using this environment for the preparation of the certification exam that being said we have successfully created the cluster we have created a notebook attached to the cluster and also we are able to run pieces of code such as print of hello world and also spark and we are able to see the details without any issues as part of this lecture let's understand how to set up the material as part of your databricks platform i will also walk you through the details about how to use it effectively to take this course but for now let's understand how to import the material i'll be providing a zip file or a dbc file you should be able to download that the file will be provided as part of resources in udemy you can just go to the external resources and download the file it might download as a zip file or it might download as a dbc file make sure you have uh, either of them if you have zip file make sure you unzip locally once you unzip you should be able to see a file with dot dbc extension once you see the file with dot dbc extension then you should be able to go to your workspace as part of your databricks platform make sure you choose appropriate folder under your user now i'm in my home directory in this workspace i should be able to right click here 
click on import here we should be able to uh, choose a file that is there locally or we can also give git link in this case we are going to provide you the resource uh, as a downloadable and hence you will be downloading onto your pc for that reason you have to choose file you should be able to drag and drop or you can also click on browse once you click on browse you can actually go to the downloads folder where the file is downloaded on your pc once you go to that downloads folder you can actually choose that dbc file you see i have a dbc file here now you should be able to click on upload you can see that it is taking a bit of time to actually upload once it is uploaded you have to click on import it will take a bit of time because there are quite a few notebooks in this once the import is done you will see a folder as part of your workspace you should be able to navigate to notebooks that are relevant for you while you uh, take the course let's wait until import is done uh, once we validate whether the complete content is imported or not then we'll also see how to use this material as part of the next lecture the folder which is added is nothing but this one databricks certified apache spark developer now you should be able to click on this you can see there are several subfolders depending upon the modules related to the course you should be able to navigate to respective notebooks and you should be able to take up this course that being said make sure you set up the material the videos will be available as part of udemy or any lms platform where the course is published uh, you should be able to refer to the relevant notebook by going to your databricks platform once the material is set up then you should be able to use the notebooks here to actually practice this is the main folder it has several subfolders these subfolders have the notebooks so each and every subfolder is named after the section in uh, lms and hence you should be able to easily relate to the uh, lectures and sections in lms with the folders and the notebooks in databricks platform make sure you import and also spend some time to understand the structure then you should be able to use this material effectively to take this course as part of previous lecture i have walked you through the details about setting up the material as part of your databricks platform for effective learning all the material will be made available to you you should be able to relate the material with your lectures and you should be able to go through the code examples that are there as part of the material that being said let's understand how to use this interface effectively so that uh, you can actually take the course without getting into too many issues first you need to make sure you validate the uh, material is set up properly for that you should be able to go to workspace here then you should be able to go to your user space you can see here you should be able to click on this to actually go through the hierarchy this is my user space as part of this user space you can see there is a folder called as databricks certified apache spark developer you can consider this as a course as part of the course we have sections or modules in lms you can see there are several subfolders in this these subfolders are one to one mapping between sections or modules in lms and this one that being said uh, all these folders will have databricks notebooks you can actually go here and you should be able to see uh, you can actually go to this notebook to understand how to use this environment effectively as part of uh, this sectional module itself after this notebook you will understand how to set up the datasets and also you will be running this notebook to see if datasets are set up properly or not let me use this as reference and let me walk you through about how to use these notebooks to actually practice from the code examples perspective first of all whenever you have a notebook in databricks it is supposed to be attached to a cluster so that you will be able to run this as of now you see here this is not attached to any cluster which means you will not be able to run if i try to run it you see this notebook is not attached to a cluster would you like to attach to databricks certification cluster to continue working at this time i have a cluster which is up and running that's why it is actually showing it in your case you might not have this if you don't have it you have to make sure you set up the cluster by going to compute and then you can take it further i have already covered as part of the sectional module you just have to make sure a cluster is ready by now once the cluster is ready uh, once you go to the notebook you can actually select that cluster once you select the cluster then you should be able to run one cell at a time or you can run all the cells also you have to spend some time in understanding these uh, uh, items okay you can expand this this is related to managing the notebooks you can create a new notebook you can clone the existing notebook to some other notebook you should be able to rename you can also move to some other folder you can also move to trash you can also upload data you can also export this notebook to uh, dbc archive or source file so and so forth like this there are quite a few options this item is primarily to manage the notebook this item is primarily to manage the cells within the notebook you can see the details with respect to managing the cells in this notebook 
you don't use this that often especially from the training perspective you might use it in other scenarios you don't need to worry too much about this you will not be touching this very often if you are interested you can explore this is related to the security of this notebook if you are actually setting up the material as part of your personal account and if you are using your personal account to learn then this is not very important even otherwise you don't need to break your head around this now we use this very often if at all we want to run all the cells in the notebook one after the other we should be able to click on this and it will take care of running all the cells one after the other you can see here it have run all the cells one after the other you should be able to review the output and understand what is going on when it comes to the notebook it will have state and also you can see the results here this will actually provide you options related to managing the state as well as results if you click on clear results all the results will be gone you can see all the results are gone here you can also click on clear state it will take care of uh, garbage collecting all the variables that are defined as part of uh, this uh, session and then you have to uh, start from the beginning and run in specific order so that whatever cells you want to run can run without any gaps you can also use this option to clear state and results you can also click on clear state and run all it will take care of clearing the state by uh, garbage collecting all the variables and then it will take care of running all the cells one after the other you can see that all the cells are being run one after the other at this time on top of these you can also see the options here these are the options which are available to manage with respect to one cell if you want to run a particular cell either you can use shift enter it will take care of running that particular cell you can also click on this and you should be able to click on run cell to run the cell also you should be able to click on this one to run all above cells and also you can use this one to run all below cells it will take care of running all the cells below this also you can use it uh, uh, to actually get the dashboard we will not be using this very often with respect to this course and hence uh, don't worry too much about it you can also use this to make sure you manage cells uh, by copying pasting exporting so and so forth you can also minimize a particular cell you can also delete the cell uh, if you try to click on this it will actually ask for the confirmation if you wanted to delete the cell without confirmation then you have to use shift and then you have to click on this then the cell will be deleted uh, if the cell is deleted if you want to undo you can actually expand this and you should be able to click on undo delete cells or make sure uh, your cursor is not uh, uh, in any cell if it is outside the cell when i say cursor i'm talking about this one you see the cursor is in the cell if you type z here it will actually uh, print z as part of the cell however if i select somewhere outside now i am in the command mode i should be able to use z to actually undo uh, the previous delete with respect to the cell you can see the shortcut here it is nothing but z to undo i have undone earlier we have seen how to hide now if you want to uh, see the complete cell you should be able to click on show cell and you should be able to see the complete cell this is how you should be able to leverage the material provided to you while taking the course keep in mind that the lectures will be available as part of the lms such as udemy or some other platform uh, the material will be set up as part of your databricks account once you set up the material as part of the databricks account you should be able to relate uh, to the lectures and you should be able to practice uh, by going through the relevant notebook that is there as part of the material i wish you happy learning i hope this will streamline the process of learning in case if you run into any issues at any point in time feel free to raise the questions as part of the appropriate forums we will try to revert back to you as quickly as possible as part of this topic we will see how to install databricks cli and also how to configure it to connect to this databricks account we will be using uh, the databricks cli against azure based databricks we can also follow the same steps even for the aws based databricks that being said to install databricks cli you need to have python and pip set up on your pc or mac or linux based desktop i already have python as well as pip on this mac and hence i can use pip install databricks cli to set up the cli to interact with the databricks uh, platform once you install databricks cli you can actually say databricks and hit enter you can see list of sub commands under databricks such as clusters fs jobs runs etc however to run these commands by interacting with the databricks account you need to first configure let us see the help with respect to the configure you can say databricks configure hyphen h to actually connect to databricks account you have to generate token and you have to authenticate using that token so here you can say databricks configure hyphen hyphen token you need to enter the databricks host url that you can actually go to the databricks uh, platform and then you should be able to copy this url and paste it 
Once you paste this, you need to generate the token and you have to pass the token over there. If you go to community edition and if you click on this user icon and go to user settings, there is no option of generating token, which means we might not be able to configure Databricks CLI against the community edition of Databricks. However, if you go to the full edition of Databricks, whether it is Azure or AWS, it doesn't matter. You can click on this user icon and then go to user settings and you can actually generate token here. So I can click on generate new token. This is primarily for demo. Lifetime is only one day. And then let me click on generate. Now the token is generated. I can copy this, click on done, and then paste the token here and hit enter. Now the Databricks CLI is configured with our Azure Databricks account. We can validate by saying Databricks FS and hit enter. You can see the subcommands of FS. LS is the command which can be used to list files in DBFS. And hence I can say Databricks FS LS like this. And I should be able to see the root level buckets such as file store, Databricks results, ML, temp, etc. Which means our Databricks is successfully configured to connect to our Databricks account and get the information from there. Now we should be able to use other commands such as uh, clusters to manage the clusters. Already we have seen FS to list the files. We can use other options of FS also. We should be able to maintain users as well as groups by using this groups option. We should be able to manage or submit jobs using jobs as well as runs, so and so forth. We will see several other details with respect to Databricks CLI as we proceed further. Let us understand how to use Databricks CLI to interact with files that are available as part of the platform. If you actually say Databricks-H, one of the commands that is available is nothing but FS. FS stands for file system. This can be used to interact with files that are available as part of the Databricks platform. Now, if you go to the UI, as part of the UI, you can actually go to data, then add data. You can upload files from here. Once you upload the files, they will get into DBFS. You can preview by clicking on this DBFS. Typically, the files and folders will be uploaded to this root bucket called as file store. In that, there is a pre-existing bucket or folder called as tables. In that, we have created this retail underscore DB and then the other subfolders where we have uploaded the files. However, if you recollect, this is quite cumbersome. We have to go to upload file and we have to give the directory and then we have to drag and drop one file at a time if we have multiple folders that needs to be uploaded. Using CLI, it can be a bit straightforward. First, let us understand how to list files and then we'll take it further. If you run Databricks FS-H, it will actually show the list of commands that are available under FS. You don't need to worry too much about Configure. Configure is primarily to authenticate with our cloud account. We have already taken care with the high-level Configure command under Databricks. This is a bit redundant. I don't think we have to use this. As we have already configured, now we should be able to run these commands for different purposes. If you want to copy files, we can actually use CP. It will take care of copying files to and from DBFS. The source or target can be local file system also. If we don't specify the DBFS protocol, it will uh, try to look for that location on local file system. If we specify DBFS protocol, it will actually look for that location in the configured Databricks uh, platform. Then we can use ls to list the files, mkdrs to create the directories, mv to move the files, rm to remove the files. Let's start with the ls. You can actually say Databricks fs ls hyphen h to get the options that are available with ls. There are not many options except for hyphen L where we should be able to get all the information related to files or directories. So in this case, if I just said Databricks FS LS and hit enter, it will give us the root level buckets. Now if I want to get into the details, I have to use the DBFS protocol and then the root level bucket which is nothing but file store and then you can hit enter. You can see the tables in this. Now to actually access the retail DB, we can say tables retail DB like this and we should be able to see the folders under retail DB. If you want to get details with respect to these files, we can actually say hyphen L like this, and you can actually get the information whether it is a directory or a file, and also the size of that. Typically, directories will be sized with zero value. Now, if you get into the orders with hyphen L option, you get the type, then the size, and then the name. It will not give any other information here. This is how you should be able to use ls to get the details about the files. Now, if you want to copy the files, you can use cp command. However, I have already copied uh, elp dataset and I want to recopy again. For that, first I will be listing the elp dataset 
and then I'll be removing the directory and then I'll be copying uh, from the local file system into DVFS. That way you'll be seeing the examples with respect to MV, MKDRs, etc. So here I'm uh, typing the command Databricks FS LS then DBFS colon file store then tables then help dataset. We already copied uh, files into this location and you can see there are eight files. I just want to delete everything for that I can actually say rm and hit enter. It is uh, complaining saying non recursive delete of non empty directory. To get the help we can say databricks fs rm hyphen h and hit enter. To delete the files and folders recursively we can use hyphen r option. So in this case as help dataset is a folder we have to use hyphen r because it is not empty. Now everything in that folder will be deleted along with the folder. Now if you run databricks fs ls on top of uh, file store and tables you will not see help dataset anymore. Now let's start with creating a directory. I just want to create a directory by name help dataset. For that we can use a command called as mkdrs. First let us get the help by saying databricks fs mkdrs hyphen h. There are not many options we can just give the directory name and that directory will be created for us. So here I am just trying to create the help dataset directory. I can say databricks fs mkdrs. I can copy till this point because I want to create help dataset under the file store tables itself and then help dataset is the name so I can copy paste this one also. Now if we hit enter it will create the directory for us. We can list the directory by saying databricks fs ls and then dbfs file store tables help dataset. We just created the directory we haven't copied any files yet into this location. You will see empty directory here. Now if you want to copy you have to be in uh, right location and then use the relative path or you can use fully qualified path also. But in this case instead of copying files directly into this location I want to create subdirectories in help dataset and then I want to copy each of these CSV files into separate folders. Because it is a command line utility we should be able to script and we should be able to take care uh, without much issues. With the UI it is not possible to automate that easily. That being said in this case I am running the mkdr command or mkdrs command by saying dbfs file store tables help dataset then I want to have uh, the review in one folder so I have created the directory. Once this directory is created I want to create another directory by name checkin then tip then business and then business r. As the folders are created now we should be able to use cp command to copy files into respective folders. To get help on cp you can actually say databricks fs cp hyphen h. In this case also there are not many too many options except for very few. They are nothing but hyphen hyphen overwrite. If the target um, file already exists if you want to overwrite then we can use hyphen hyphen overwrite. Otherwise it will fail saying that file already exists. If you want to copy something recursively you can use hyphen r or hyphen hyphen recursive. Apart from this there are not many options. That being said now let us copy one file at a time. First let us get the directory names by using ls command. I want to copy review.csv to the review folder in uh, dbfs. So I can say databricks fscp. I can give the relative path. I am in the uh, parent directory of this uh, lpreview.csv. So I can directly say like this or I have to specify the fully qualified path. Now we can actually copy into this folder by specifying this as target path. The folder is nothing but review under help dataset and hit enter. Now the file will be copied it is a bit big file so it will take time. You can see it is 3.8 GB file. We have to wait until the copy is done. It's been a while since the copy is triggered it is still running. The file is 3 GB and hence it will take its own sweet time. As I am using my internet it will take this long. In actual production implementations we might not copy data into dbfs like this. We will have a dedicated network between the data center and the um, cloud platform and hence the copy will be faster. Also we might use the cloud native solutions such as AWS S3 or Azure Blob to copy files into and then we directly create tables off of it and process or we can also use APS to process data directly off of the cloud native storage such as 
AWS S3 or Azure Blob. That being said, we have gone through several commands uh, to interact with file system. We have used CP to copy files, LS to list the files, MKDS to actually create the directories, also RM to remove the files. If you want to explore, you can also try MV. It is primarily to move a file between two DBFS paths. When it comes to CP, it actually copy data from not only from one DBFS to another DBFS, it can actually copy file from local file system to DBFS or vice versa. In our case, the current CP command is trying to copy files from local file system into DBFS. But when it comes to MV, it says it can move files from one DBFS location to another DBFS location, which means you will not be able to use MV command to move files from local file system into DBFS or vice versa. MV can be used only to move files from one DBFS to another DBFS location. As this copy is taking quite a bit of time, I just want to conclude this session. Uh, once the session is concluded, after the copy is successful, then I will actually copy the other files uh, for business, business hours, check-in, tip, etc. As of now, the files related to review is being copied from local file system into DBFS. As part of this lecture, let's go to the details related to setting up retail data sets using Databricks CLI. Before going to the details related to setting up the data sets, first we need to make sure Databricks CLI is installed and also it is configured with token. The reason why we are actually setting up these data sets is that uh, we can actually learn all the key concepts with respect to Spark using Databricks platform. To make sure whether the Databricks CLI is installed or not, we should be able to go to the terminal. Then we should be able to say Databricks hyphen hyphen version you should be able to see the version like this. Depending upon when you install and where you install, you might see a different value here. Don't worry too much about it. However, it is very important for you to validate whether your Databricks CLI is configured against the Databricks account using which you are actually going through the course. For that, you should be able to use this command, Databricks FSLS. If uh, CLI is configured with token against the Databricks account which you are interested in, you should be able to see the results from that account. Uh, in this, we need to make sure that we create a folder. The folder name is nothing but public. We'll be copying RetailDB datasets into this location. We'll be copying both the datasets in CSV format as well as JSON format into this location using different folders. Now, here are the instructions to set up RetailDB dataset under DBFS public. Uh, you have the dataset in this location. You should be able to clone uh, wherever you want. In this case, I'm actually cloning it into my home directory. However, it is complaining that uh, it doesn't exist. I need to make sure the path is correct. Let me see if this is right or not. It is right. Let me copy this. Now let me go here. Now let me say git clone and paste. Now let me hit enter. Now you can see that it is cloning. Uh, this command misses dot git at the end. That's why it might be failing. Now let me go back here. Let me update this. Now the command is updated here, you can see. Uh, now it is time for us to delete .git folder in the folder that is created because of this command. Let me go back to the terminal. You can see that there is a new folder by name retail underscore db is created. It contains several folders and files. We can actually copy all these folders and files into dbfs using appropriate command. However, if you get into this folder and then run ls-altr, you can see a hidden folder by name .git. There is no need to copy this into the DBFS and hence we should be able to delete this folder. For that we should be able to say rm-rf.git if you are using Linux or Mac. If you are using Windows then make sure you open File Explorer. File Explorer is nothing but yellow icon which you see as part of the taskbar. Once you get into the File Explorer make sure you navigate to the folder to which the datasets are cloned. Then you get into that folder and make sure you right click on .git and delete it. You can use File Explorer of Windows to actually take care of deleting .git if you are not able to take care of this using command line. Now as the .git folder is removed from this folder, we need to go into the parent folder uh, or you can actually stay in that folder also, there is no harm with it. You should be able to leverage this command, Databricks FSCP command. You can actually specify the uh, path of the uh, folder which you want to copy to DBFS recursively. Here there is a typo as part of the path. Let me update this. The path is nothing but slash users slash ITVersity, then retail underscore DB. Uh, this is the location of retail underscore DB. We should be able to validate by saying CD retail underscore DB, then 
pwd you can get the path here if you are using windows then you have to use the path by copying from the file explorer on top you should be able to see the path you should be able to select the path which contain these folders and files then you should be able to update this database fscp command once the database fscp command is updated then you should be able to copy the command and paste the same command which is working for me might not work for you you need to make sure the source path is fixed also before actually running this we need to make sure public folder is created as part of the uh, database file system we haven't uh, done that yet we need to first create a public folder under dbfs for that we should be able to use this command you can take care of this even before cloning the repository even after cloning the repository you should be able to take care of this in this case i have already cloned the repository now i'm actually uh, creating a folder by name public you can see uh, the public folder is created you should be able to validate by saying databricks fsls you see public here earlier as part of databricks fsls output there was no public now we should be able to copy paste this command make sure the source path which is nothing but this one is actually updated uh, depending upon your environment then only it will work otherwise it will not work i have already copied now i should be able to paste uh, make sure you add hyphen hyphen recursive here so that the folder is copied into dbfs in recursive fashion now let me hit enter it will take a bit of time to copy all the folders and files into the target location once everything is copied uh, we should be able to validate whether all the folders and files are actually copied into dbfs or not by using this command it is still copying we have to wait until this is completely done then we should be able to use that databricks fsls command to validate now all the folders and files are copied successfully to dbfs we should be able to use this command to validate whether all the folders and files are available in the location or not you can see folders and files in that location you can also run ls hyphen ltr in the location uh, that is created because of the git clone to confirm the folders and files that are there here uh, you can compare these results with the results that are generated because of databricks fsls command you can see folders and files here which means all the folders and files that are there locally are now copied into dbfs in the similar manner you should be able to copy the files related to retail db json they are actually available in this github repository you just have to clone and then copy uh, using similar command like this also once the files are copied you should be able to validate using similar command like this make sure you set up both the datasets so that you should be able to uh, uh, run all the notebooks without too many gaps as part of previous lecture we have gone through the details related to setting up retail datasets in this lecture let's make sure the datasets are properly set by validating you can actually use this command called as percentage fsls as part of database notebooks to actually validate whether the particular location exists or not you can see the output here it actually shows the files and folders that are there as part of this location which means this is the right location where we have certain datasets you can also review data related to a particular subfolder uh, in this uh, folder using this approach in this case we have used the same percentage fsls command however this time we have specified fully qualified path for the orders folder you can see the orders folder here we have specified the fully qualified path it is optional to specify the protocol when it comes to commands like this uh, as part of databricks notebooks you can also review the details with respect to retail db json we have used same commands or similar commands to actually review the details related to retail db json as well first we have seen the details with respect to this main folder you can see there are several folders and also there is a file also we should be able to review the details about a specific folder under slash public slash retail underscore db underscore json using this command you can see that there is one file under this location you can also use uh, this approach to actually review the files in a given uh, dbfs folder in this case this is nothing but a python based function call dbutils is a library that is available as part of the databricks platform underneath it it have a attribute called as fs using this fs we should be able to invoke functions such as ls rm etc ls is primarily to list the files in this location you can actually see the details about the file in this location there is only one file and you are able to see the details of that file in a list in the similar manner you should be able to use python based code on top of it to process this data further in this case we are actually trying to print each and every file detail one at a time in this case we are actually accessing uh, one of the attribute that is there as part of the item here so as part of this list we'll get multiple file info objects 
file info objects have attributes such as path name etc so in this case we are trying to get the details about path attribute in each and every file info object to make sure you understand a little bit better you can actually change this to public retail db json instead of uh, orders now let me delete this now let me run this this will actually return multiple folders and files let me also clean this up let me run this accidentally i have deleted single quote let me update it now let me run this you can see there are multiple file info objects in this location you can see the details here each one is nothing but a, a file info object these file info objects have attributes such as path name and size if you just want to get the paths you can actually get the paths like this you can actually say file details which is of type file info then you should be able to say dot path to actually get the path details you can also say dot name to get the names of the files or folders so and so forth this is how you should be able to validate data sets using your databricks notebooks leveraging relevant commands or code snippets make sure you validate and confirm that you have actually set up the data sets if data sets are not set up make sure you set up these data sets as early as possible that being said not having these data sets are not road blockers with respect to preparing for the certification or learning spark you can still continue learning while you explore how to set up these data sets